our next article, which is going to be Heineken and 3D printing. So Heineken has started to invest in 3D printing at their Seville plant in Spain. Now, you might be thinking, well, what is Heineken going to do with 3D printers? Well, I got the answer for you. It really breaks down into a couple main aspects. They're talking about using like specialized tools. Essentially, their technicians are like, you know, making sure the production line is running. They're fixing things here and there. They want to make sure that they're as safe as possible and that they can do their job as efficiently as possible. And having access to 3D printers allows them to make devices really, really quickly. Then they talked about replacement parts. And this is really where it comes in, the usefulness of 3D printing. They have these Ultimaker 3D printers on hand. And instead of, let's say, a little paddle or like a little stamp or something breaks in your production line and you're somewhere like they have... 70 countries that they operate in with 130 plus plants, you have to send a part to a plant that's really, really far away from where it's manufactured. And the lead times can be like a week or two. And during that entire time, your production line has to be shut down. Yeah. I've worked in a factory, multiple factories before. Give us some insight. Uptime is like the main metric by which you, you count on like the reliability of everyone, the manufacturing engineers, everyone operating, you care about uptime because every time that the line is down, you're losing an opportunity to make money. So I can see why Heineken kind of wants to have 3D printing there because it's a more uh, versatile and flexible supply chain than you know re- relying on this part to come from across the world when you can just print it on the spot. That's exactly it. And you know, we actually talked about this um, during our very first episode we and did. We're, we're saying how great it would be, like in a supply chain aspect, what a great advantage this would be to have 3D printing uh, access and facilities on site for companies. So this is a perfect example of that. And yeah. going to throw some numbers at you. Cost and delivery time wise, um, the director of, I think, supply chain or whatever was saying that they saved 70 to 90 percent on average. Jeez. Big numbers, dude. Yeah. Big, big numbers. So yeah, this is a no-brainer. It completely makes sense why they're doing this. And what I was really happy to hear is that they're using Ultimaker. I thought they were probably going to use some like industrial 3D printers, but no, it's Ultimaker, something you can just buy off Amazon. It's like two grand, I think. Two to five grand. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I think like Ultimaker, their whole uh, mantra is bringing professional level 3D printing accessible to at anyone at their price point. So it's cool to see that Heineken's using something like that. Absolutely. And like... I really, really enjoy the, what we're talking about here. Like, think about running a factory or any type of machine that, you know, requires hardware. Waiting anywhere from like three to 10 days to get a replacement part versus being able to print it in a matter of hours, that seems like a no brainer to me. Yeah, it makes sense. And I think if it's going this well in, in one of their plants, they're probably going to start spreading this approach into all of their factories. Yeah, well, I mean, we talked about it in the aerospace industry. We're not talking about it with beer and beverages, and the beverage yeah. industry. I've also heard about instances where in the military, like in the U.S. Army, some of their supply chain that's delicate, they've been replacing it by just having trailers full of 3D printers and milling machines to create, you know, use advanced manufacturing to create parts on the fly. I mean, it, it seems like a way, you know, in a time where we've just exposed how delicate the global supply chain is with the pandemic having some type of versatility like this and flexibility to be able to create your own parts on the fly. seems like a t- two thumbs up for me. We've been yelling about the benefits and the 3d revolution that's coming from the rooftop since the Genesis of this podcast. And now yeah. we're slowly seeing it happen. I am. I'm in for it. Me too. Well, thanks everyone for giving us a few minutes of your day to listen. We really appreciate every single one of you, everyone that's in our community. What we'd really appreciate from you is if you could take one minute of your time to just go to Apple Podcasts and leave us a review or share this po- episode po- share this podcast episode with a friend. It would really, really go a long way to help us continue growing and continue putting out episodes that you like. Thank you, everyone. And that's the secret sauce. <laughs>